Hello and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way. On this channel we talk books and today I'm very sadly recording the last video in a series that I have been recording this year all about the Dewey Decimal System. I'm going to link up in the cards to the playlist for all of these videos. They're all in one place so that you can find any section that you've missed. Um, but this is the last one, the 900s. All of the previous ones were talking about the 0-100s through to the 800s and this is our very very last one. So uh, I'm kind of a little bit sad. I'm also very excited to come to the finale of, uh, of this series of videos. So let's get right into it. Uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, let you know that um, down in the description below will be a list of all of the books that I mention in this video today. Um, also linked down below will be the challenge. It is pretty late in the year, but um, if you are a keen bean and you want to still join us, um, you absolutely can do that. The link to the challenge is down there. Let's move the table a little closer to me so that I can see this, which is my iPad that has the list of the Dewey Decimal Classes. It's a Wikipedia page, and I'm going to link that down in the description as well in case you want to go and have a look. All right, let's talk about 900. So 900 is the history and geography section of the Dewey Decimal System. I've already read a book uh, for this prompt in the challenge, and that book was Spare by Prince Harry, um, and it comes in at 9 20 um so uh which is the section for biography uh yeah biography and genealogy so 920 is just biography and i believe it's just listed uh alphabetically by author's surname so here it is this is the book i read for this prompt of the challenge i'll link up into in the cards above the uh video where i reviewed this book in case you're interested and want to hear my thoughts on it uh, but that's the one that i've done for this point in the challenge. Okay, let's talk about it though. Um, so in these videos, what I normally do is I talk through the section, uh, tell you what the kind of the subheadings are for the different parts um, within each kind of group of 10 numbers. Um, and then I show you some books from those uh from that section. So let's get into it. The first section is just the 900s and this section is just called history. Uh, so 900 is history, geography and auxiliary disciplines. 901 is philosophy and theory of history. 902 is miscellany of history. 903 is dictionaries, encyclopedias, concordances of history. 904 is collected accounts of events. Then we've got serial publications of history, organizations and management of history, education research related topics of history, history with respect to groups of people, and then 909 is world history. All right, the book that I have to show you for this section is this one. It's called Fierce Appetites, Loving, Losing, and Living to Excess in My Present and in the Writings of the Past. And this is by Elizabeth Boyle. This is a book I've borrowed from the library. It's not one from my own collection. Uh, but essentially, this one uh, is taught by an, a medieval historian whose name is Elizabeth Boyle. Um, and it says, every day a beloved father dies, every day a lover departs, every day a woman turns 40. All three happening together brings a moment of reckoning. Medieval, medieval historian Elizabeth Boyle made sense of these events the best way she knew how, by immersing herself in the literature that has been her first love and her life's work for over two decades. Fierce Appetites is the exhilarating and deeply humane result. Not only does Elizabeth Boyle write dazzling accounts of ancient stories, familiar and obscure, from Ireland and further afield, but she uses her learning to grapple with the raw and urgent questions questions she faces questions that have bedeviled people in every age so this sounds like a really great book um, and if you are looking for a book in the 900s this could be the one for you all right the next section is all about geography uh, so this is geography and travel uh, so that's what 910 is moving on to 911 we've got historical geography then 912 is graphic representations of surface of earth and of extraterrestrial worlds. Uh, 913 is geography and geography of and travel in the ancient world. And then that same geography of and travel in, we've got Europe, Asia, Africa, North America, South America. And then 919 is, as we have discovered in many other areas, 
where everyone else gets lumped in. So we've got Australasia, Pacific Ocean Islands, Atlantic Ocean Islands, Arctic Islands, Antarctica, and on extraterrestrial worlds. And I just, I love that Australia, where I live, um, is lumped in with extraterrestrial worlds. Like, (laughs) the Dewey Decimal System, everyone. Okay, (laughs) so I've got a couple of books to show you from my own collection uh, from this section. So the first one is called Rose. The Extraordinary Voyage of Rose Defracinet, The Stowaway Who Sailed Around the World for Love by Suzanne Faulkner. Uh, This is a book I um, have not yet read, and in fact, most of the books here I haven't read, uh, although the next one that I'm going to show you I have. Um, But essentially, this book is all about um, a woman whose husband is a naval officer, um, and then she basically dresses in men's clothes and um, stows away secretly aboard the ship um, that he is about to sail on uh, to the South Seas and then for three years just travels with these <laughs> with this sh- with the ship and this is a true story of course because we're in the non-fiction section um, so it sounds really really fascinating and I'm really interested to know more about this uh, character and what her life would have been like. The next book that I've got to show you, um, oh sorry, I don't think I told you what the call number was, it's 910.922. Um, the next one I've got to show you is a book that I have read and it is George Orwell's Down and Out in Paris and London. The call number for this one is 914.436 um, and this was a really fascinating book um, all about uh, a period of George Orwell's life where he's kind of in between writing jobs. <laughs> um, So he moves to Paris and he basically has no money. Um, So it talks about some of the like bad jobs that he had and it's a fascinating look at what life was like um, working in hotels in like as a, you know, washing dishes in hotels uh, in the in the kitchens there. Um, And uh, you know what what the kind of hierarchy is what it's like looking for work because at uh, for a big good portion of this book he's completely unemployed um so he's kind of like going from place to place trying to find a job um and that yeah really really fascinating and then eventually he goes back to london um and for a, a short period of time he is unemployed there as well so you get to kind of find out about his uh life there and what it's like to be homeless and unemployed um in this period of time in london so yeah really really fascinating book just in terms of like learning all about those periods of history where you know and what what it was like for people um, who had no money and who had did not have a job. Um, so yeah, recommend. It's a really, really good read. Um, I, If I can find it, I will link up in the cards to the uh, um, video where I reviewed this book. I think it was last year that I read it, so I should have a video on it. I'm pretty sure I do. <laughs> All right, so that's that one. Uh, the next one I've got to show you, so we're back to books now that I have not yet read but are in my collection. Um, this one is called One Italian Summer by Pip Williams. Um, now, Pip Williams is the author of the Dictionary of Lost World Words, sorry, not worlds, words, um, a fiction book, uh, and also the Bookbinder of Jericho, which I read this year. Um, so I found this book last year, I think it was, uh, and it's a non-fiction book that she wrote. Uh, so this is her uh, basically going to Italy, I think. Well, yeah, it's called One Italian Summer, so you would assume that's where they're going. Um, It says, across the world and back in search of the good life. But I picked this one up because um, it's an author who has written books that I have very much enjoyed. So I've never read her nonfiction before, so it'll be interesting to know how that compares to her fiction. Um, But essentially, uh, basically, Pip... Uh, And Shannon, who I'm assuming is potentially Pip's partner, um, decided to quit their jobs and pull the kids out of school and went looking for a different life in Italy. Um, So basically it's just their family search for a better life and, um, you know, way of living and so on. So yeah, it should be an interesting one. Let me know if you've read it before. 
be interested to know. All right, moving on now to 920. So this is where uh, the Prince Harry book spare um, lived in uh, the Dewey Decimal System. Uh, but this is the biography section. Now, this section is very short uh, in terms of its description because uh, it says 920, biography genealogy insignia. And then it says 921 to 928. This range is reserved as an optional location for biographies which are shelved alphabetically by subject's last name. And then 929 says genealogy names insignia. So that's the that's it. That's the description for the 920 section. Uh, I have one book to show you, which is of course a biography. Um, now this biography could uh, so biographies don't have to live in this section. They can live in other sections as well, uh, based on the topic. So often, uh, for example, if someone is a musician, um, their biography would live in the uh, 700 section, which is where the books about music are. So usually that's sort of how we do things. But I guess when you've got a biography that's looking at different things, um, or, you know, is kind of not uh, based on a particular topic, um, then this is probably the best place to shelve um, a, a biography. So the one that I've got here is actually by a musician. However, she's not specifically talking about music, so perhaps that's why uh, it has been placed here. But it's called Bohemian Negligence by Bertie Blackman. Uh, Bertie Blackman is an Australian musician, uh, but this biography is more about her uh, bohemian upbringing. <laughs> um, so essentially she talks about what her childhood was like and, and life was like. Um, so I am looking forward to reading this one. Um, I bought this one brand new last year or the year before, last year I think, um, and I do really, really want to read it. So I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet. I really I really should just do that. <laughs> okay, so that's the 920s. Moving on to the 930s. Uh, this section is called History of Ancient World to Circa 499, and it's Circa 499 because um, essentially depending on the geographical area, uh, what's classed as Ancient World uh, varies. So for example, um, you'll see this as we go along. So, of course, 930 is just the history of ancient world to circa 499. But then 931 is China to 420. Uh, then 932 is Egypt to 640. Uh, Palestine to 70. So, like, it's a very kind of specific um, year or sort of vague uh, period of time. Uh, but it's very de uh, dependent on the area. Uh, so then we've got South Asia to 647, Mesopotamia and Iranian Plateau to 637, Europe North and West of Italian Peninsula to 4, 9, circa 499, uh, Italy and adjacent territories to 476, Greece to 323, and then 939 is the other parts of the ancient world. Uh, I don't own any books from the 930s, so I uh, grabbed one from the library, uh, and it is called Cleopatra, Her History, Her Myth, and it is by Francine Prose. Um, and the call number is 932.02. So, of course, any books that are about um, historical figures from the ancient world would definitely belong in this um, in this part of the Dewey Decimal System. Um, so that's what you could be keeping an eye out for. If you already have something in your collection, this is where it probably goes. Okay, let's move on to the 940s. So this is we're now moving into the history of various geographical regions of the world. Um, so here we have the history of Europe in 940. Um, and then we specify uh, particular places in Europe as we go through. So we've got uh, British Isles, England and Wales, Germany and neighbouring Central European countries, France and Monaco, Italy, San Marino, Vatican City, Malta, Spain, Andorra, Gibraltar and Portugal, Russia and neighbouring East European countries, uh, 948 is Scandinavia, and then 949 is other parts of Europe. Uh, I have two books to show you from my own collection uh, from this section of the Dewey. Uh, so the first one is called Isabella of France, The Rebel Queen by Catherine Warner. The call number for this one is 942.036. Um, and this one is, of course, uh, all about Isabella of France. Um, so, yeah, I probably don't need to read you <laughs> the, the blurb of these because these are about particular people. So you get, you kind of get the idea. Um, the other one from my collection that I own is has a gorgeous cover uh, and it is called Jane Austen's England by Roy and Leslie 
Adkins and the call number for this one is 942.07 um, so of course which is England and Wales that section there uh, so this one I picked up just uh, you know obviously I really like Jane Austen I've read uh, all of her main novels the finished novels I haven't read her shorter um, shorter pieces and the unfinished uh, one Sanditon, I think it's called. Um, but yeah, I picked this up because I'm interested in Jane Austen and what life was like for her um, and at the time in which she was writing. Uh, so essentially, this is just talking about what it was like in England at that time. Uh, right, let's move on to the 950s. This is the history of Asia. And again, it's broken up into different countries. So we've got uh, China and adjacent areas, Japan, Arabian Peninsula and adjacent areas, India and neighbouring South Asian countries, Iran, Middle East, or which in brackets is called Near East, Siberia, uh, which is in brackets is called Asiatic Russia, uh, and then we've got Central Asia, and 959 is Southeast Asia. Uh, this is a book uh, that I have from my own collection called The Tiger Ladies by Suda Kool, um, a memoir of Kashmir. Uh, so this is basically... Um, a memoir that is geographic in nature so it's based around a place and that's why it belongs in this section uh, because it's looking sort of at historic Kashmir and um, telling us all about that so nice and straightforward I probably don't need to tell you very much about these books today because I think uh, in this particular section of the Dewey it's quite obvious why it's here <laughs> all right let me pop this pack uh, this big stack of books down so I can uh, put the next stack on my knee and we'll continue in just a moment. Okay, I am back and we're ready for the second half now of the 900s. So we're moving into the 960s now and this is the history of Africa. So this again is broken up geographically. So we've got uh, Tunisia and Libya, we've got Egypt, Sudan, South Sudan, Ethiopia and Eritrea, Morocco, I've never seen that country before. C-E-U-T-A. Suta? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, please correct me on my pronunciation down in the comments if required. Uh, Melilla, Western Sahara and Canary Islands. Uh, 965 is Algeria. We've got uh, West Africa and offshore islands. Central Africa and offshore islands. South Africa and Southern Africa. Hang on a second. Central Africa and offshore islands. Is Central... Okay, I'm just going to sound dumb if I say this, but Central Africa, I would have imagined, meant, like, the countries that were, like, in the interior of, of Africa. But I guess maybe it means, like, down? No, but then we've got West Africa, East Africa. I don't know. I'm confused. I don't know how you have offshore islands if we're talking about... Anyway, let's just move on, Kelly. <laughs> Okay, uh, 963, sorry, 968 is uh, South Africa and Southern Africa, and then 969 is South Indian Ocean Islands. Uh, from this section, I don't have anything in my own collection, so I've borrowed something from the library. Uh, this one is called The Last Colony, A Tale of Exile, Justice and Britain's Colonial Legacy, uh, and it is by Philip or Philippe Sands, um, and essentially what this was uh, is about the British Indian Ocean Territory um, which is a base uh, was from like a US base uh, in the Chagos or Chagos archipelago um, so essentially what they did was in the in the sixth in the 1960s a secret decision was made by Britain to offer the US a base in the Chagos Archipelago, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Chagos maybe, uh, create a new colony called the British Indian Ocean Territory and deport the entire local population. Um, so one of those inhabitants was Lisby Elise, 20 years old, newly married, expecting her first child. One suitcase, no pets, the British ordered 
expelling her from the only home she had ever known. For four decades, the Mauritian government fought for the return of Chagos, and for the past decade, Philippe Sands has been intimately involved in the cases. In 2018, British and American lawlessness was finally challenged at the World Court in The Hague. Fourteen international judges faced a landmark decision. Would they rule that Britain illegally detached Chagos from Mauritius? Would they open the door to Lise B. Elise and her fellow... Chagossians <laughs> returning home uh, or exile them forever. So essentially this is sort of uh, talking about kind of the the vestiges of colonialism and, and how that's impacted people's lives, people who are alive today <laughs> um, and are still being impacted by um, the, the legacy of colonialism. So yeah, this sounded really, really fascinating and I would really like to read this. Um, it's something I don't know very much about at all. Uh, so yeah, should be an interesting one. Okay, moving on to 970 now. So this is the history of North America. Um, now, this I find this section I find a little bit challenging, shall we say? And it's it's one of those sections that's a real reflection of the history of the Dewey Decimal System because uh, obviously it has a very Eurocentric uh, kind of. Uh, attitude and also a US centric attitude. So um, although all of the other sections of parts of the world just have like one section for a country, the US part is kind of broken into sections. So it is what it is, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's one of those sections of the Dewey that I find a little bit challenging. So let's go into it now. So 970 is history of North America. 971 is Canada. Then we've got Mexico, Central America, West Indies, Bermuda. We've got United States, which has its own just sort of one section, which or, uh, personally, I think all of it should just be in there. Uh, but then it specifies. So 974 is northeast, northeastern United States, New England and Middle Atlantic states. Uh, 975 is southeastern U United States uh, or the South Atlantic states. 976 is South Central United States. 977 is North Central United States. 978 is Western United States. And then 979 is Great Basin and Pacific Slope region of United States. So it is what it is, I guess. Um, but yeah, kind of just feels a bit weird that, you know, you've lumped Mexico, Central America, West Indies, Bermuda all into one section, and then you've given that many sections to the country, one country, the United States. Anyway, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on with my life. Okay. <laughs> the one that I've got for you today is not from my own collection because I don't have anything from this section there. Uh, but this book is called Alfred Stieglitz, New York by Bonnie Yokelson. Um, so Stieglitz is um, a photographer and uh, it is his photographs of New York. Um, so yeah, this just looked like a really fascinating book um, about all about New York, but that's why it's here because it is uh, specific to um, a historic portrayal of the city of New York. So very interesting. Okay, moving on now to the 980s. This is the history of South America. Um, and so here we are talking again, we're dividing up into countries. So uh, we've got Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Bolivia, Peru, Colombia and Ecuador are together. Venezuela, Guyana, Paraguay and Uruguay are together is uh, in 989. The book I've got again is from the library and it is called Crusoe's Island, A Rich and Curious History of Pirates, Castaways and Madness by Andrew Lambert. Uh, this book was interesting to me because um, this is kind of talking about the parts of the world that were part of the Robinson Crusoe um, story by Daniel Defoe. Um, so it, essentially, you know, we've got a shipwreck sailor and then the book is kind of about his adventures. Uh, but it says, uh, the complex reality is more surprising, more colourful and considerably darker than Robinson Crusoe. Uh, drawing on voyage accounts, journal entries, maps and illustrations, Lambert brings to life the voices of the visiting sailors, scientists, writers and artists. There are the early encounters of the 1500s, the perilous journeys of the 18th century explorers, the naval conflicts of the First World War and the environmental concerns of more recent years. Crusoe's Island reveals that the British relationship with this distant tiny island extends far beyond a single book. 
this true history helps us to understand why the British, still a naval power but no longer a great maritime empire, are not yet ready to give up on the ocean or on tiny specks of land at the far ends of the earth. Yeah, sounds really fascinating to me, um, just sort of, and again, I guess it kind of links in with the book that we were, we just talked about, about the, um, that was also kind of looking at the colonialism and uh, British powers and, and what that has kind of meant for people, <laughs> people who live in these places and uh, who visit there. Okay, so that's uh, the 980s. Now we are into the very last section, uh, which is the history of other areas. So as per usual, the Dewey Decimal System kind of lets us down here uh, for any countries that aren't part of those other bits of the world. So here we've got history of Australasia, Pacific Ocean Islands, Atlantic Ocean Islands, Arctic Islands, Antarctica, and extraterrestrial worlds <laughs> okay now there is a section here that is no longer is not assigned or no longer used and that's 991 and 992 so in 993 we've got New Zealand then we've got uh, 994 is Australia so as you can imagine the books from my collection are all going to be from that section there uh, 995 is New Guinea and neighboring countries of Melanesia we've got Polynesia and other Pacific Islands 997 is Atlantic Ocean Islands, 998 is Arctic Islands and Antarctica, and 999, Extraterrestrial Worlds. <laughs> I just find that so weird. Okay, let me pop these down. Okay, so let's talk about the books that I've got, and they are all from the 994 section, which is all about Australia. So this one is a big one. So let me just... Hold it back here so that uh, you can see it and me. Uh, this is called Documents That Shaped Australia, Records of a Nation's Heritage by John Thompson. I found this one, uh, sorry, the call number is 994. Um, I found this one when I was secondhand shopping and I just found the concept of it um, really uh, interesting. So essentially it's going through, I'm not going to show you the pages, it's too big, <laughs> too big to hold up. Um, but essentially it's going through some like documents, historical documents and kind of just talking, giving like a one or two page summary of like why they're important and uh, what it meant, what these documents meant, what changed because of um, that document. So it's a really, really interesting look at that. Uh, the next book I've got for you has a very specific call number and it's quite long. Uh, it's called Sheila by Robert Wainwright, the Australian beauty who bewitched British society. The call number is 994.04092. Um, so this is all about a uh, sort of Australian socialite who, uh, it says here, wedded earls and barons, befriended literary figures and movie stars, bedded a future king, was fated by London and New York uh, society for 40 years, and when she died was a Russian princess. Um, so this is all about a woman called Sheila Chisholm. I've never heard of her before, um, but uh, yeah, essentially just an interesting character. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm keen to learn more about her. Uh, the next book I have for you, I picked up when I was actually in Alice Springs, when, uh, on my honeymoon actually, um, and this is called Alice on the Line by Doris Blackwell and Douglas Lockwood. Um, so Alice Springs is a, a town in the centre of Australia. Um, and, it, you know, so as you can imagine, it is as far away from the ocean as you can be in, uh, in Australia. Uh, so essentially it was a telegraph station and... Uh, when uh, Doris Bradshaw Blackwell went there um, as a young girl in 1899, that's what it was. It was just a telegraph station. Um, Mr. Black Mrs. Blackwell's father, Thomas Bradshaw, was office officer in charge of Alice Springs Telegraph Station from 19 sorry 1899 to 1908. He took his young family from U Udnadatta, the railhead, on a buggy ride of more than 300 miles. In this book, with the collaboration of territory author Douglas Lockwood, she has recaptured the atmosphere of those early days, only 30 years after the construction of the OT line and 40 years after John Mc McDowell Stewart first crossed the continent from south to north. This personal story of a life of life at the Alice 
at the turn of the century is not only a book of great historical interest, it reflects a deep love for the country and its people. So, um, yeah, we visited the telegraph station when we were there and um, I picked up a copy of this book to learn more about it and then neglected to read it, of course, as, as we do. So the call number for this one is 994.2910092. All right, two more books to go and then we are done. <laughs> um, so the next one is called Ruth Park, Sydney. The classic guide to Sydney is what the Sydney Morning, Morning Herald calls this one. Um, so Ruth Park is an author who wrote lots of um, novels based around in, in and around Sydney where she lived at the time, although I don't believe she is actually um, a, an Australia. I think she might be a New Zealander. Um, but essentially it says, take a stroll through Sydney in the company of one of Australia's most loved writers who will entertain you with information, ironic comment, and a hundred diverting tales of its past and expansive present. Ruth Park's impressionist portrait of Sydney brings to life many of the tragic, praiseworthy, or outrageous people who contributed to the formation of the city's idiosyncratic character. Um, so, yeah, she's a prolific writer um and this is her kind of take on sydney which is the city where i live so that's why i've got it uh the last one i've got is a more even more niche uh sorry i don't, don't think i told you the call number 994.41 this one has the same call number um but it's more a more niche view of sydney and that is sydney cemeteries a field guide uh by lisa murray um so yeah again 994.41 uh i some years ago really got into cemeteries a little bit uh, and I would go to the cemetery and just go walking around looking at some of the old graves because uh, it's really interesting. So this I bought this guide to Sydney cemeteries so that if I ever decided to go visit a cemetery that I hadn't been to before I would have some information about it and kind of know if there were any really interesting graves to seek out to have a look at interesting people who are buried there, very historic areas, that sort of thing. So that's what this guide is all about. Probably not the kind of book that you read from cover to cover, so maybe not so good for this challenge, but a very interesting book to have in my collection either way. <laughs> oh, we're at the end, guys. I'm a little bit sad, to be honest. Um, but thank you so much if you've been watching from the very beginning of this series, um, because it has been an absolute pleasure putting it together. Um, it was very interesting for me to organise my collection into Dewey numbers and put it in order. It certainly makes it much easier for me to find things because instead of things being kind of like spread out around the house, I've got things in like a central location now and in their Dewey order, which makes it easy for me to find because it's of course topular based. <laughs> so if I'm looking for a book on a particular thing, I can find it really easy. Um, so thank you so much for joining me in this series and in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments if uh, you have already read your book for the 900th prompt. Let me know what it is. And if you're still just plan in the planning phase, let me know what you are thinking about reading for this prompt. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the next video. Bye for now.